similar acidic liquids, such as the hot springs in Yellowstone National Park. So some have speculated that organisms could survive in the clouds of Venus. And they may have even evolved ways of making use of available ultraviolet light, much like plants use visible light for photosynthesis. You have a lot of chemistry going on in the clouds. You've got sulfurs and you've got hydrogen and, and other elements that are needed to harbor life and to sustain life. And those are abundant at those altitudes. So it's not inconceivable that life could survive or exist in, in the cloud layers of Venus. One method to test whether life could exist in the clouds of Venus is to examine the clouds above Earth. Measurements here on Earth, for example, capturing particles of cloud and examining them in the lab have shown that very small organisms and bacteria can actually survive just sort of floating through the atmosphere being caught up on updrafts and just gusts of wind. And they can perhaps survive in the atmosphere for long periods of time. As an analogy, the same type of behavior might be occurring on Venus. So if there were life in the Venusian atmosphere, it might just be kind of flitting along for long periods of time. NASA may one day send a mission to Venus to find out if there's life in its clouds. But right now, scientists are keenly interested to learn whether another truly peculiar planet exists in our solar system, a mysterious planet that has yet to be discovered. Planet X is a hypothetical planet that may exist beyond Neptune. Planet X is sort of a generic designation for an unknown planet that's somewhere in the outer solar system that remains to be discovered. Astronomers began to speculate there might be a missing planet when observing the Kuiper Belt, a repository for icy rocks beyond the orbit of Neptune. The outer edge of the Kuiper Belt is called the Kuiper Cliff because the density of space rocks drops off steeply here. This could be caused by Neptune's gravitational pull or perhaps by an unknown planet. One hypothesis for the drop-off in Kuiper Belt objects that we see after about 50 or 55 astronomical units is that there's a planet lurking out there somewhere which could be sort of hurting them inside of that region. Scientists have wondered for decades how many planets our solar system harbors. Is there really a Planet X? Originally, Pluto, when that was discovered, was designated as Planet X. More recently, there have been discoveries of other Kuiper Belt objects, things like Eris and Sedna, for example, that have been assigned the designation Planet X. There still remains to be the, the discovery of a very large object in the deep solar system. So there's sort of still this idea that a, a planet X or a mysterious hidden planet is, is out in the, the solar system somewhere. Scientists may soon solve the mystery of the so-called Kuiper Cliff. If a planet X really exists, these cosmic sleuths will find it. We think that we should be able to learn whether or not there really is such a planet relatively soon with a new generation of large-scale surveys that are going to detect anything out there. Planet X may or may not exist. But there are other planets that have been observed far off in space that are truly out of this world. Our solar system contains some pretty unusual planets, but we're not alone. 
sophisticated telescopes have now identified nearly 300 planets that are located well beyond our solar system. They're known as exoplanets. The most peculiar exoplanets are pulsar planets. Unlike most that orbit a star like our sun, these planets orbit a fast-spinning neutron star called a pulsar, which emits a pulsing radio emission, much like a lighthouse. In the 1990s, scientists actually discovered a trio of pulsar planets about 900 light years away, located in the constellation Virgo. If I had my say, they'd probably go down as the weirdest planets in the universe. And these planets are all very close in to the pulsar. Now, that's no place for a planet to exist. Nobody expected to find planets around these things because a pulsar, or a neutron star, is the remnant of a supernova explosion. The star has ripped itself apart in one of the most violent, chaotic explosions known in the universe. So what were planets doing there? This was a real surprise. There are three of these planets, and two of them are about four times the mass of the Earth, and the third planet is about twice the mass of Earth's moon. So very small planets indeed. In fact, they orbit so close to their neutron star primary that they could actually fit within the orbit of Mercury. So they're very close in. The enduring question is how these planets survived the supernova event at all. If the same thing happened to our sun, the planets in the inner solar system would have been vaporized. If those planets that we see were there at the time of the supernova and they survived it, they certainly would extinguish any life that might have been on those planets. There's no hope for that. Just the power and the energy and the radiation environment of the, of the supernova would make it pretty lethal to anything. If the three planets weren't orbiting the star at the time of the supernova explosion, then how did they get there? Maybe these weird pulsar planets formed from the debris surrounding the supernova, the exploding star. Maybe there was a disk of material that was shot out, but it didn't quite escape, and it left a disk of debris from which planets then formed. We don't really know how these weird pulsar planets form. They challenge all theories so far. Pulsar planets shed startling new insight into the formation of solar systems throughout the universe. If the pulsar planets formed after the supernova explosion, then they're important because they indicate that planet formation can happen in rather extreme, unexpected environments. Maybe you don't need something quite as orderly as the gas that formed our own planetary system. So that's really cool. But if the planets were there before the explosion and remained bound to the star, that's an interesting challenge to theory as well, because it shows that somehow planets can remain bound in some cases. Pulsar planets are oddities, but the neutron or pulsar stars they orbit are also quite bizarre. Neutron star material is incredibly dense. It has a very high mass per unit volume. In fact, it's as dense as an atomic nucleus. So if I had a shovel full of sand and this were actually neutron star material, it would weigh as much as Mount Whitney in the Sierra Nevada range in California. It would have as much mass as a mountain. And a bucket full of this neutron star material would weigh as much as Mount Everest, the biggest mountain on Earth. Now, I can lift a bucket of sand quite easily, but if this were actually neutron star material, there's no way I could lift Mount Everest. That shows how incredibly dense neutron star material really is.
there are two types of neutron stars. Pulsars that spin rapidly and emit beeping radio pulses. And magnetars that spin slower and emit energy from magnetism. Magnetars, which are much rarer than pulsars, have the strongest magnetic fields known in the universe. There aren't any places on Earth where you can find magnetic fields as strong as you find them in a magnetar. But there's kind of a parallel with this Tesla coil. The Tesla coil is originally experimented with by Nikola Tesla, who was trying to figure out how to provide electricity without having to wire hose, but actually provide electricity through the air. The Tesla coil has a big voltage difference, about half a million volts between the ball in the middle and the cage that surrounds it. And that gap is a release of energy that when the electrons fly through the air, releases a tremendous amount of energy that you see in those sparks. A magnetar is kind of the same thing. It's a release of energy that you see in gamma rays and x-rays. Magnetars can release gigantic bursts of energy not in a periodic way, like a pulsar, but rather sort of at random. Something happens to the crust, like a star quake. And a bunch of magnetic fields come together and release a tremendous amount of energy, which gets turned into x-rays and gamma rays. Magnetars and pulsars are both strange stars. But scientists have discovered something even more bizarre. A star that acts like a pulsar and a magnetar. NASA's Rossi X-ray Timing Explorer has observed this unusual star ejecting five colossal outbursts of energy in the form of flares, which are characteristic of magnetars. They occurred five times between May and July of 2005. Each flare lasted less than a second, but released energy equivalent to tens of thousands of suns. There's been one case of a pulsar which went through several magnetar-like outbursts that require this much stronger magnetic field and some sort of a restructuring of the magnetic field that suddenly releases a lot 